It's January 25th, 2011, and I'm Red Blanchard, and here's what I think tonight. I wanted to talk about the same subject I had the other day, that is Marchfield, California, when I was in the Army. I left out a lot of fairly important stuff. That was a highlight of my life, as a matter of fact, that time that I was stationed in Marchfield. I'd like to tell you what happened. Uh, had nothing to do with the Army, really. On my off time, I had started back east before I ever got into the Army. I started roller skating. So in, Gar in um, Marchfield, right outside the town of Riverside, why, I found a roller skating rink in Riverside. And this is kind of funny. The um, roller skating rink was made in a former car dealer. During the war, all the car dealers went out of business because there was no cars. So this one car dealer had a fairly big room there with a glass, a plate glass windows, and they set up a roller skating rink in there. I decided to go there. I forget. It might have been a Nash dealer. I don't know. One of those, one of those car dealers was there in Riverside. So I go over there to Riverside to go roller skating, just as I had done back in Gardner, Mass., when I was roller skating out on the road to Winston. And, uh, you know, remember, I might have told about that when I when I roller skated there and I and I used to bring a whole bunch of girls to the skating rink and charge them 10 cents a piece for gas uh, for bringing them to the rink, taking them home after. Well, out in um, March Field, I went to this roller skating rink in town. The first thing I saw was this beautiful, tall girl uh, skating around, and I, and I just walked up to her and I said, uh, would you want to skate with me? And sure enough, she did. Well, we skated around a while, and I found out that she was from Colton, which is right next door to Riverside. Not only was she from Colton, but she had her brother and her sister there. All three of them were there at the roller skating rink. Well, I was so impressed with her that I asked her if I could take her home after the skating. And she said, well, you've got to take my brother and sister home too. And I said, fine, that's okay. And at the time, I had this 1934 Ford convertible with a rumble seat. Wonderful car. Wish I had it today. They're worth big money. Anyway, after the skating was over, we go out to the car, and what do you know, the battery was dead and it wouldn't start. So I got in the side of the car, and all three of them got out and back and pushed me, and I let the clutch in and got it rolling, and then I, you know, they all got in the car and took them home. Well, that girl turned out to be Phyllis East, and her sister Carol, and her brother Joey. Well, Phyllis East, about a couple of years later, maybe a year and a half later, became my wife. And we had 40 wonderful years together. We had three children, and two of them are still alive today, and I see one of them, one of them lives near me. I see her every couple of times a week. Anyway, that all started at March Field. One of the side benefits of being at March Field was to go outside the camp and go into town and do things like roller skating. Okay, so we did that. One more thing they had at March Field at that time is the USO shows, fairly close to Los Angeles. And uh, I remember Bob Hope brought his great big show out there. We all got excited and got to see the, the big stars from Hollywood in these USO shows which they had almost every week there in Riverside, uh, in uh, Marchfield, I mean, not in Riverside. They were out there at Marchfield at the air base, had a big auditorium out there. We had a lot of fun. And being stationed as, as a permanent party person, that's what they called us, permanent party, we had a, what they called a Class A pass. We could come and go anytime we were off duty. We could automatically get out the gate and go into town. The poor guys who was on the combat crews training to go to overseas they were out of luck. They couldn't get a pass. They couldn't get anything. They were making them toughen up for war duty, I guess. But us people that were stationed there at uh, March Field, we got to go into town anytime we want. And as a matter of fact, uh, besides that car, I was riding a motorcycle at the time. And I remember one time I went all the way into Los Angeles on my motorcycle. And this is another funny thing that happened there. I go into this drive-in one of these old-time drive-ins where they had people bring out stuff to your car. Well, being a motorcycle, they wouldn't do that, so I parked the motorcycle and went inside. 
and a couple of guys in there were impressed with my motorcycle, and they wanted to go for a ride on it. And I recognized them right away. One of them was a famous movie actor named Jack Oakey. You might have heard of Jack Oakey. And um, the other guy that was with him was uh, Don Lee from the Don Lee, or not, not, not Don Lee, one of the Lee brothers, uh, Tom maybe. I forget his actual name, but from the Don Lee Broadcasting Company anyway. So anyway, um, uh, Jack Oakey got on that motorcycle and took it for a ride. And I waited there to drive in till he came back. I wouldn't have let anybody else do it, but since he's a famous movie star, I couldn't say no. So anyway, I drove back to March Field after that, too. That was one of the benefits of being at March Field. You were so close to the people in showbiz in L.A., they came out there. We could go into L.A. whenever we wanted. And uh, besides meeting my wife there, which was one of the highlights of my entire life, of course, after, uh, after we had 40 years together, she got breast cancer, and she died about 25 years ago. And here I am, still living all alone in Escondido, California, and producing this website, GHS 38, aimed at my graduating class in 1938, Gardner High School in Gardner, Mass. And that's what I'm thinking about tonight. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you later, and so long until then.